All right. Welcome and good morning or good brunch, almost good afternoon. We're running a little behind today because it was hockey day with the kids. The ecosystem of innovation in the built environment. That's what we talked about all week. Solutions in the built environment are abundant. There are software solutions, distribution solutions, labor solutions, building product solutions, to name a few. But what happens when you stack these clever ideas in new or unusual ways where the sum of its parts are far greater than the whole? Is it possible that the way that you combine them adds a different quality in the end? This week, we explore that question with award-winning innovation expert at Windover Construction, Amir Rafat, Vice President of VDC and Technology, decorated architect and developer and founder of Assemblage Works, Michael Matthews, and architect, engineer, and certified passive house consultant, and also co-founder of Theus, Katrin Klingenberg, each addressing similar problems in the built environment. Fragmentation, the need for healthy, affordable housing, reducing digital and physical waste, and finding a roadmap to build it better. So join us today. We're going to talk about all these conversations. And I made some cliff notes for all of you that maybe didn't get to see the show this week. So this episode is going to help you get snippets of what you missed and what you might want to go back and watch. So we're super excited to be able to bring this to you. And I hope you like the new formats that we're trying out. We're always trying to up our game, make it a little bit better, make it a little bit more fun. But most of all, make it educational. So good morning to you. I hope everybody has uh, their coffee or are on their next cup of coffee. Anyhow, I know I am on several. We were at the hockey match this morning already. And by the way, it was a W. So congratulations to the girls. They did an excellent, excellent job this morning uh, playing hockey. About an hour from here, we had to go. All right, let's hop into it. Monday. Who did we have on Monday? If you're out there, let us know in the comments. I want to know if you watched. What an amazing show. We had Amir Rafat on, Vice President of VZ, VDC in Technology, Windover Construction, talking about leading edge construction tech. They are also the Autodesk 2019 Innovation of the Year, a Global Recognition Award to an individual leading, changing, and transforming the design and or construction process in a positive way. This was an amazing show. Here's a little snippet. Let's put it on so you can see a little bit about what it was about. And we'll walk through each one. Utilize existing technologies and offerings that we can utilize in, uh, with a little bit of creativity to yeah. resolve issues and provide innovative solution. And that we work closely with our great superintendents on, on, the, uh, on the site to communicate these messages and work with that in real time. So the whole goal is technology at Wendover is to mitigate risk, making sure what's, there are no surprises in, on site, basically. No surprises on site, mitigating risk. All of this adds up to value. What's going to be so great about some of these next clips that you're going to see is with the mirror. We went through the ecosystem of what they are doing, the parts, the pieces that make up the puzzle that are helping them build it better when awards, global recognition awards, not just any awards, global recognition awards. So let's keep going through this. Again, this is a cliff note version for all you out there. We are live on LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch. So get your tweets on, get your tweets on. And if you're not subscribed to our YouTube channel, come on, subscribe. I know a lot of you out there don't want to let the world know you're watching all this great information, but it's fun for us to know who's out there for sure. So let's keep moving on. Let's show a little bit more about what they are working on. Took that a step forward using the follow grant technology to help guide the assembly of these trusses. So for years, we've been using mixed reality to visualize how projects will look like, but also we put this uh, to support our field team to guide assembly uh, and put pieces together. All right. Has anybody out there used Fologram technology? I would love to know. Put it in the comments. Have you used Fologram technology before? Do you know what it is? If you don't, you can go to our YouTube channel and check it out. Um, I'd love to replay all these shows, but we'd be here for three, a little over three and a half, almost four hours every Saturday morning 
Uh, and that's even more than I can bear of myself. So hopefully <laughs> we're not going to get into that. But uh, if you know what that is, we'd love to hear from you if you have been using it. And we'd love to know how you've been using it, uh, because the technology is out there. The technology exists. The other industries, manufacturing, they figured it out already. We're just trying to figure out how we plug and play it into our system. And if we can figure out how we plug and play it into our systems, it's a win. And that's what Wendover Construction has been doing. So let's get back into a couple more here. Our industry can really have a, a big chance of progressing using not only the different technologies, but the key is combining it with the building expertise, as we said, the ecosystem. So the project life cycle starts with our very early planning of the project. We evaluate the project, see what the challenges. It's all uh, take first solutions based to resolve the challenges. Solutions based to solve the challenges. So I, I just, this whole discussion was unbelievably amazing. So, uh, hey, Ron Williams, it's been a long time since I've seen your name pop up. No surprise in sight. Good to see you, Ron. I hope all is well with you. It looks like I got some risque people uh, trying to come in from YouTube, so we're going to block them right out. Uh, all right, everybody, let's keep rocking and rolling as we move forward here. A little more Amir Rafat and what they have going on. It's all about the data and how we can data. utilize this data in a meaningful and easy, straightforward way so clients, because clients are not as good as we are in visualizing what's in 3D and 2D and what's in 2D and 3D. So we really need to have, you don't need to be experts in, in specific software to read the data and benefit from it 10 years from now. And that's what we do. We make straightforward package to deliver to the client to make sure uh, they have all the data they need to support their future facility maintenance. Yeah, so... All the data that we need and what the consumer needs and the end user needs. So a little background on that, you know, basically when their client or their stakeholder receives their property, uh, they are not only getting their property uh, constructed and handed over and usable and livable, they have an entire blueprint and data of what's behind the wall, where it's at, everything is defined and we know where it is so if there is ever an issue a problem they want to expand they want to add to they know exactly where to look for all of that so <clears throat> you want to learn more about that that was monday with amir rafat so check it out monday's expert interview and that's this past monday for sure award winners you want to follow the leaders that's who we're trying to have on this show is people that are doing it better so <clears throat> that leaves wednesday hump day Wednesday's hump day. And man, was it a Wednesday. This Wednesday, I was in Manhattan at the NAB show. That's right, NAB. National Associations of Broadcasters trying to, trying to up this game that you see right here going on, like behind the scenes and all the fun stuff. I don't know if you can see this other side here where all my switchers are and what we have going on. But that's what I was doing, just like everybody else is out there trying to up what they do to build it better. I got to up it on how to build it better and understand it, but at the same time, find new ways to make the show entertaining, educational, and keep bringing on the best in the industry. And that's what we're really passionate about, sharing that unedited version with all of you out there. So we hope it's helping. If it is helping, please let us know. We love to hear from you. We love to see the comments. It just helps us keep growing our business. So if you like what we do, Man, you're going to love this conversation. All right, so here we go. Let's get back to it. Michael Matthews, CEO and founder at Assemblage Works, Inc. He was giving us a 360-degree view for prefab success. That's right, 360-degree view for prefab success. We need alignment amongst all of the team members, architects, developers, and general contractors to make this work. And that's what this conversation is about. So much of it, so much of it, and I'm sorry if I'm yelling into my microphone, so much of it that we are now 
going to have to have round two because there was so much information coming out. We could not get to it all. We just couldn't get to it all. There was too much information. So guess what? We're going to have round two. Round two. How about a little applause? Round two. That's what this mixer over here does. I don't know if you can see it. So we will have round two coming up. All right, let's hop into it. Enough of me playing around and showcasing all my fun stuff here. Let's show you what you came for and get this started. That assemblage works is really three things. We are basically fully dedicated to the idea of design excellence in the urban environment. Uh, we, you know, first and foremost, we are architects and first and foremost, we want to work in a, a world of true design excellence. Number two, though, is that we wish to be and will continue to always be 100% oriented toward the idea of utilizing DFMA and modern methods of construction as methodology of what we do. I think we maybe will be the first firm actually maybe crazy enough to say it. And by that same token, we feel if we're going to walk the walk, this is what we need to do is that whether it is a mass timber project, whether it is a modular project, whether it is a project that has to be panelized. In our mind, this is the methodology that will get us faster and more predictable. And our job is to guide our owners and the rest of the team to find the right methodology with the right basis of fulfilling both time and budget to get us to the right place. Uh, the third issue is, is really the, uh, of our mission is really to, in essence, to be able to be the guide and the connector between owner architect and contractor, and all of the affiliate groups that basically are associated to this. And so uh, big picture, that is kind of what we're about. I love it. I love it. Big picture. That's what they're about. How do we tie all of this together? Now, listen, that was like the first 30 seconds of the show. There is so much more to unpack here. We're going to keep walking through it. And again, I'm really trying to get some feedback here. If everybody likes this new format where we're trying to do the cliff note versions of our shows, uh, we may go back and do that to a lot of the shows to make it easier to search, make it easier to find what you are looking for. But also, we know you're busy. We know you're busy and we want to make sure that nobody misses anything that we have going on. And this is a quick way to update all of you out there. So I hope, hope you're enjoying it and uh, let's keep rocking and rolling here with it. The adoption was frankly, again, kind of the cat playing with the mouse till right about this time. And really what happened was, is that, we lost, we were gutted of our entire senior staff. We had to find a way to be able to cross over and draw faster. I'll put those in quotations. Uh, draw more effectively. And the only talent I had was all this new talent coming out of school because my entire upper echelon was gutted. And that's really where the breakover point, where the full adoption of BIM, whether it is Revit or whether it's ARCHICAD, was really adopted right at that point where firms were reduced. We had to kind of restructure self. We had to rethink how we're going to operate. And that was the place we started to do it. Yeah. So restructure, rethink how they're going to do things. This is something we've all been doing. Uh, and if you haven't kind of picked up on it just yet, Michael Matthews has been doing this a long, long time and has worked on some uh, really, really large projects and he has a real passion to bring this knowledge to all of you out there so um i'm super excited to have him on the show let's keep rocking and rolling we got a lot more to get through here dave you know this is our ecosystem this is where we live so the notion is is that if i can't solve all of these people's problems or be able to mitigate the issues that each of them have you know the you know the idea is that when i'm picking a modular provider I need to be able to define, well, what is their capability? What is their capitalization basis? You know, are they debt free? Do are they, are they being restructured? You know, because I'm not going to be the one answering that, but there, there are people and the bottom one on the financing insurance, especially on the issue of due diligence. If you've ever not gone through a due diligence basis with a equity provider or a debt provider, it is truly a religious experience because they will ask everything about anything. And they are demanding of being able to say, well, What's your provider? What's his, you know, what's his background? How is he financed? How is he basically capitalized? What has he done over the last five or 10 years? And 
The problem is that when we start talking about that, you start getting into manufacturers that have a very short sort of a fuse that they've been in existence is that I, those are items that we cannot answer. And so then you have to find ways of how do we mitigate this? What is the best way of describing this? Um, in the projects that I was running that were modular, we actually got to the place where we were selecting MEP groups that have done dozens and dozens of modular projects because it was a way to mitigate not so much the project because we knew they were a work they were great consultants but more they were going to satisfy the issues of the finance and all the questions on due diligence finance due diligence if you even just take a look at that 360 degree circle uh that michael put together and ran through in uh, there's going to be round two because we did not get all the way around the 360 degree circle, but we are going to be working on getting around that 360 degree circle for sure. So uh, stay tuned for more on that. All right. So that was our Wednesday show. So make sure you go and check those out. Um, I may even start putting timestamps on some of this stuff to make the information easier to search. If that's of interest to you, let me know. Because then you're hired. You can come help us do it. There's a whole lot of uh, lot of work doing all that. But if you're interested, we would do that for you. That's what we want to do here is to build it better and make it easier for all of you out there. All right, BS Friday. Mark, bare naked Willie. And he does not show up naked, but he does show up. Just not naked. Unless he gets a beard trim, and then he feels a little bit naked. But if you don't know Mark, Mark and I have a lot of fun on our show. And if you didn't see this last week's show, we had not only uh, a conversation on Theascon that's coming up 2022, we had one of the original founders of Theas. That's right. We had Katen Klingenberg, co-founder of Theas. And we were talking about Fiascon 2022 and more because guess what? We can never stay on topic on Fridays. That's why. We learned a whole lot more. Anybody out there want to take a guess on how much, how much it costs to build to passive standards? Anybody want to take a guess? How much more than traditional construction do you think it costs? To build, give me a percentage 1%, 20%, 30%. How expensive is it truly to build to the passive standards? Somebody out there has got to know. What do you think? Let us know. All right. While we're getting ready to show you some of the videos and touch points on that and the answer to that question, emissions down. Power Up, kicking it off with Katrin Klingenberg, co founder of FIAS. That's right. We're only a week out from FIASCON. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not going to be there, but our good friend, Andrew Seeley is going to be there. Our good friend, Mark Naked Willie is uh, holding, I think, three education sessions or talks right now. You want to get out there. Sean St. Amour himself coming down from Canada. The question is, is he bringing his private helicopter, which I really don't think he has. But uh, some reason he's been around those helicopters lately, getting out the islands and doing stuff. Uh, I don't know. I wish I had his life on occasion, uh, but they're all going to be there. So let's talk about this a little bit further after we show you a little bit more of what's going on here. Yeah, so quick intro. Uh, I'm the executive director and co-founder of FIAS. Uh, and um, so as such, I'm essentially the uh, chief troublemaker of uh, the 501c3 organization that I founded about like, what, about 20 plus years ago now. And uh, so when we started, we set out to make passive building mainstream to tackle the climate crisis and to help make the world a better place. Uh, and uh, since then, we have moved on that by uh, setting standards uh, for buildings to achieve our climate reduction, uh, carbon reduction targets. Uh, we've worked with policy makers across the country. Uh, we've uh, designed a certification quality assurance uh, process for buildings to help uh, practitioners to execute passive buildings easily, a uh, design methodology that comes with it so that they can uh, reliably repeat uh, zero energy buildings, like essentially zero energy ready uh, and zero energy buildings. 
And uh, what, what else do we do? Uh, we uh, train uh, professionals uh, and we have an annual conference. That's what we're going to talk about. And that's all part of like continued education and building community and enabling everyone to help us reach our climate goals by hopefully the latest 2050. <laughs> Love it. By 2050, the latest. Reaching the climate goals. That's the idea here. Uh, this conversation only gets better. It only is going to get better. So we're looking forward to sharing a little bit more. But, you know, how amazing is it that you have uh, somebody like Kat, and that's what she likes to go by on the show, um, and her, you know, 20 years ago, whenever, whenever this really did start as a founder, um, she had the foresight and the vision, her and whoever the other founders are, to really see where the future's heading before the rest of us. So, you know, uh, that's what I always say. The more the more women we have in this industry, the further, faster we are going to get. And I think uh, uh, I just round of applause to Kat for sure. I really do appreciate her being on the show. All right. But that's not it. There's more from that part of it. Ah, Andrew Seeley must have been watching the show, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Talk was first. They they were like uh, ready to take the risk and jump in, and they they always want to be first. That's fine. <laughs> so, but then Massachusetts looked at New York and was like, hmm, "We can do this better," you know, like whatever. All the like famous schools and stuff. They they really knocked the ball out of the park. They decided to uh, go ahead and uh, finance a whole bunch of fierce projects first proof of concept they came in at like two percent additional cost they said oh this is awesome now we are ready to like uh, create a zero energy code and by one by 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 the first of january 2023 that that zero energy code is coming out and for like all multifamily projects uh, greater than twelve thousand square feet uh it will become fierce will be code you know so uh that's kind of insane and they don't adopt it right away but I, I hear like at least 30 municipalities like they volunteer to adopt it two years ahead of time and then like two years it's going to go into effect for everybody two percent by the way did you like the sparkles on that two percent i'm getting better at some of my my own personal editing here uh, we have so many things getting edited behind the scenes with some of our other team members uh, that this is just the way it rolls. I got to do some of my own work, man. I love it. I actually love it. 2%. Did we hear that? 2% and it's starting to be adopted. New York, Massachusetts. Super cool. Super, super cool. Yes, Andrew Seely, I see you. You are the winner. Winner, Michael, you missed it by a half a percent on that one. But I, there, I bet there's a study on that, too. Good to see you, Michael. Uh, love the studio shots. Looking good at Dave Cooper Live Studios. Yeah, it's getting there, man. Hey, listen, I bet this showtime works really well for you. Hi, Andrew. Andrew's not a morning person. Not a morning person whatsoever. All right. Well, let's keep rocking and rolling again. Hey, if this format's working for everybody, this Cliff Note sessions are working with everybody to catch up so you can decide which show you want to watch during the week. Just let us know. We really appreciate the feedback, whether you're watching this live or you're watching it recorded. Right. Or I'll do it for Andrew. If you're watching it recorded, it doesn't really matter. Just let us know in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. So. Let us know. All right. We got more to go. We got more to go. And then there's what's coming up because we got a lot of travel getting ready to happen. So I think it's time we jump right back into some more. And most of the contractors we've worked with they never did a pass of us before. And if they're a really good contractor, they can learn it. And the builder's training, I mean, the way it's been done, I mean, you know, kudos to you guys. I mean, it, everybody can jump in now. There's just no reason not to. Um, yeah, right. And it's like, and it give, gives you that whole other skill set. It lets you charge for the things you were already wanting to do anyway. Everybody wanted to build better to begin with. Now you actually can charge for it. So, Michael Ingui, everybody wants to build better, and now you can actually charge for it. Super cool. It was good to see. We got a couple other surprise guests. So this show uh, started out with just a couple, and then it grew, and then it went back to just a couple, which was a lot of fun. They're all getting ready for uh, past FiasCon uh, 2022. So you don't have your tickets i highly suggest you get out there and uh and get your tickets for that because uh it's going to be one heck of an event all right let's keep rocking and rolling i know people want to see more 
going to talk about the Expo Hall, Dave. Shannon Pendleton. The Expo Hall is one of the greatest things. I mean, you've got the sessions, the speakers, the workshops, the tours, the parties. We talked about all that. Tours are going to be awesome. Phineas Khan Youth, you talked about that. First time with the future leaders. How fun. But the Expo Hall, where all the juicy products are, all the friendly reps are, they can show you how it all works. You can learn. And for the first time, we have a stage. We have a presentation stage in the Expo Hall. Do you? So this is. This is a really great point, Shannon, because I want everybody to hear this loud and clear. Without the exhibitors, you know, coming and wanting to show their goods, these events really cannot take place. So the vendors that are there, make sure you walk around, you visit them, you talk to them, uh, because without them, all these Very educational true. sessions just wouldn't happen the way they're happening, and all these people wouldn't be able to come together. So I, I really want to point that out, that, you know, the, the vendors and the people that are there to show how how they're trying to build it better and help you be better uh, are just as important as going to the educational sessions. So that's yeah, and even that's- the smartest designers need to keep up on the newest products. We've that's got right. load shifting water heaters. We've got some of the coolest stuff coming out. If you don't go to the conference, you're not going to see the newest stuff in person. That's right. You're not going to see the newest stuff in person. All right. So that was this past week. Now let's talk about what we have coming up this week. And I'm going to say hello to a few people here as well. And in just a second too, but, um, Coming up this week is a busy, busy week outside of our regular shows that we have going on. And I'm going to I got to pull make some pull changes here on my on my screen so everybody can keep up with us. We are uh, we are on the road again this week. We are heading to an on location visit. I'll put it up on the screen to Tovey. That's right. Tovey is a manufacturer in Ohio. We're going to do live on location uh, show and we're going to do a walkthrough, maybe live, maybe recorded, depending on how the service and the Internet is, because we want to be crystal clear for you. That's happening next week, October 26th through the 27th. So you're going to want to have you're going to want to be joining us for that uh, and and tuning in to see what is going on there, because it's going to be going to be going to be going to be great. So. Make sure you join us for that 110%. So not only that, not only that, right after that, we are heading out to San Francisco to IWBC at Green Build. And I have a special discount code for all of you out there. Let me go grab it here. I got to stop one screen slide and add another. But let me show you the discount code so all of you can use it. To attend. Let me take this off. Discount code construction green build. Uh, find us. Use code IWBCCR to get $100 off. Okay. Did I say that the right way, everybody? Let me try it with a megaphone. You will get $100 off if you use the discount code IWBCCR. B C C R when you register for I W B C at Green Build. I can't make it any more clear than that, right? Hundred dollars. Who gets a hundred dollars off anything? Only right here on Dave Cooper Live do you get a hundred bucks off on your show. So super excited to to be working with the IWBCC on this. And just so everybody knows, I am going to be at IWBCC. I will be the moderator for Von Buckley's panel. That's right. His keynote. Von Buckley is one of the keynotes, and I'm going to be doing the questions and answer sessions with him on that. Jerry McCahey is also a keynote. I will be doing the questions and answers with Jerry McCahey. And then we are also doing a couple roundtables, live roundtables that I will be the moderator on as well with people like Helena Lidlow and others. So you do not want to miss it. Ben Hershey's going to be there uh, on one of those panels as well and several other people. So I am super excited about doing this with IWBCC at the Green Build. And again, everybody, you don't want to miss it. Get your hundred bucks off. hundred bucks. Dang. I wish they gave me a hundred bucks for everybody that used that hundred bucks discount. We could split it and get a lot of coffee. It's not how it works. So, all right. November 1st, through the third, San Francisco. So get your San Fran on. All right. 
The week after that, you think? You think we'd get to put our feet up and chill out? Not happening. We are back in Denver, Denver, Colorado. So University of Denver, if you're listening, we're coming out there. That's right. We're coming out. We're going to steal some of your mountain time. Connect Trailblazers ECI Users Conference, November 9th through the 11th in Denver, Colorado. That is right. The Connect Trailblazer Conference. If you're not familiar with ECI, you should check them out. They have a ton of different software solutions for the industry, and they are looking at the offsite space as well. And they got teams and teams of people to make some of this stuff work. So super excited that they invited us to be part of their conference so that's where we're going to be November 9th through the 11th. All right. Now we get to put our feet up just for a few seconds. Not a long time, but for a few seconds, because then we are heading out to Las Vegas, baby. The International Builder Show in Las Vegas, January 31st through February 2nd, 2023. That's where we're heading Got to got to be at the IW or the IBS show. All these I shows. I'm gonna get them all mixed up. IBS 2023. We hope you guys can make it. That's right. You might even see a Dave Cooper live booth. We're gonna be live doing our live show on the floor. It looks like this year. All the details aren't worked out, so I better not say too much. Um, but it's all looking to be that way. So if you want us to come see you, you want to be on our show, you want us to come spotlight your booth, you better start reaching out now because the spots are filling up and we want to showcase anybody that is building it better. We want to see the best of the best and the new ideas because what we've been doing has not been working. Okay, so we get about a month and a half, two months, maybe a little maybe a little more in two months, I guess. And then in April, that's right, in April, we are going to be in Munich, Germany. Munich. I love Munich. Oktoberfest. Anybody been to Oktoberfest? That's right. That's what's happening in Munich. That's where we're going to be April 2023. Hey, let us know in the comments if it would help if I just put a calendar up with all these dates that you could just look at and download uh, and stay up to par with everything. Uh, just let us know. All right. Well, that's not it. That's not it. April. Bow. 200. I think they had 250,000 attendees or it's in the 200,000 range for that conference. So you don't want to miss it. And then we are Back in Germany, Italy, Austria, Switzerland in July. I think it's the first week of July through the first week of August. Did I say that right? Yes, I did. It's almost four weeks, maybe five weeks. We will be traveling Europe, showcasing innovation in construction, going to trade schools, going to manufacturing facilities, going to supplier facilities, and also going to job sites. So we can connect our worlds together and we can build it better together because we're doing great stuff here in America. We are. We're doing great stuff here in America. If anybody, anybody hasn't seen my American uh, flag mat here? I love this mat that I got. Uh, my American flag. But guess what? Overseas, they're doing it really well, too. And we better start talking and we better start connecting. And that's the whole idea of the European tour. So we're super excited about that. And I didn't forget it. I know somebody's going to say something. You know, the, the Vietnam tour is uh, still in the books. We're still working out the final stuff. But, man, how cool would it be to showcase some products in Vietnam and then hopping down to New Zealand to showcase some assembly of it? That's right. Building it in Vietnam, putting it together in, in New Zealand. These are all in the books. So... That's really it for today. I hope everybody got a, uh, an earful of education and knowledge, and uh, hopefully they enjoy. Hopefully, y'all enjoyed it as well. I would get me some more coffee. What's that, Mister Greg Ugaldi in the house? My oldest of four, Kathleen, is an alliance lawyer, and she and her husband Rob live in Munich. They will be a big help. That's right. I forgot they moved to Munich. All right, they're on. We'll have to go over there. We'll check up on them for you, Greg. Make sure they're staying out of trouble. I know those kids are. I got a couple. Yes, the oldest of four, Kathleen. Well, that's cool. I look forward to, you know, who knows the way I talk. Sometimes I might need a lawyer. She can help me get out of country quickly, right? That's what I think. Maybe she can help me get out fast. 
Anywho, so with that said, always have to do the rim shot. Everyone out there, listen, I know I went through a whole bunch of, bunch of, bunch of, bunch of stuff. Um, Greg did say, sorry, I missed a couple things. Uh, Jen, Dave, format is excellent. How about Coffee with Dave, your weekly recap, 10-22-2022. Each week will have a great shelf life and will be viewed by many. I appreciate that, Greg. That's what we're trying to do. We want to give everything a great shelf life for everybody. Ron Williams says, outstanding new format as well, Dave. Best live show in home building. Ron, I appreciate you, and I appreciate everything you're doing. Give us an update, Ron, on where you're at, too. You know, put it in the comments or send me a message. I'd like to know how your platform's going and everything you're working on. Uh, and so everybody knows, like I said, we're at 10,000 hours watched every 28 days right now and growing fast. That's a whole lot of hours. And, uh, you know, for those of you that are watching, I feel blessed. I thank you for that. Hopefully that means I'm not boring the daylights out of you and you're hopefully getting something from this track and trace treason spy gate money slaves. No go. Ah, oh, Diana sunshine's back. Diana, I hope you're doing well. Sorry. We didn't do a whole lot of sustainable. Well, we did for today. She loves the sustainable stuff and the, and the politics side of this stuff. But all right, listen, everybody. It's 12 o'clock noon. I guess it's lunchtime. Maybe I go make me a ham a sandwich or something. Ham sandwich, peanut butter and jelly, maybe pizza, or maybe I'll just uh, eat healthy. I haven't done a run this week yet, so maybe I better get on a run. There she is, Diana. Diana, you've always been a fun supporter on this. You got you got some really strong views, but I do love the fact that you like to tune in and, and give your opinion. So I hope you're having a wonderful day. It's good to see you as well. All right, everybody, that's a wrap for today's uh, uh Brunch with Dave, I guess it is. It's not really a coffee with Dave, but uh, that's just the way it's going to be for hockey season. If I can get up early enough, I'd pre-record these and have them go at the same time every day. Just not there yet. All right. That's it, everybody. I hope you have a wonderful Saturday. Enjoy your family. Enjoy the sunshine. Get out there before the winter really kicks in. I'm Dave Cooper. Hope you have a wonderful week, weekend, and we will see you next week live live from Ohio. Bye, everybody.